Hey what's up folks this is GK. So in this video we're going to discuss an important topic in docker which is multi-stage builds. So I want to first cover the multi-stage builds and then talk about how you can deploy a container in the cloud run in the subsequent video. So we're going to talk about why multi-stage builds and then I'm going to show you the demo of a sample react based calculator application. Uh, I'll cover both scenarios. One scenario is about you know showing a normal docker file with the build and then I'm going to show you a demo of the multi-stage builds as well. So when you are building a docker image, let's say you're building a docker image of a Spring Boot application or a React application, you use a base image, you know, either you use an Ubuntu or if you're using an Alpine, it might be an Alpine version of Java or Node, it might be a, it might be a smaller image. Now the issue is that whenever you pull the image, uh, you build the code and then finally you will have a Spring Boot jar file or an executable file that you would have to run when you're deploying that in a Kubernetes cluster or in any you know container platform. So the final image that you have built and then where you have your runtime executable file, if you don't manage it properly, then it is it's going to be a very huge file. So it's going to be around one gigs or 500 MB of file, which is like you're treating the whole Docker container as just as an another VM because that defeats the whole purpose of using a Docker container at first place because you want to create a Docker container as a micro VM, which is of a very smaller size and a, and a very lean image and a runnable, a lean runnable container. So what multi-stage builds help us is to create and optimize your Docker images. That's the main thing that you can do with multi-stage. So pre previously, what we used to do is that we used to create a shell script, building the Docker container and then getting the executable out of the Docker container and then using that executable to run inside another container. So that used to be a little tedious process. Now you can think of this multi-stage build as a, a Jenkins pipeline. You have multiple stages of your Jenkins pipeline where you build the code and then you take the executable, you know, put it into an artifactory and then finally use that artifactory to, um, to deploy that into a, a VM. So similarly, it is the same concept where you can use multiple stages and multiple actions in each stage and then you can use the previous stage and copy the executable from the previous stage which I'm going to show in the demo. But the key benefits of this are the main thing is that you're going to create a very small and lean image which is uh, going to be a runnable container of very small size. And then obviously it's going to have a better security because you don't want to have unnecessary dependence, dependencies or packages inside your main container that you're going to run. And then the fastest spin up time. So let's say you're having a one GB of container. Um, and if you're going to deploy that, it's going to obviously take some time to uh, spin up as opposed to a, a 20 MB or 30 MB container, which just has an executable. So with that, let's look at the demo. All right. So like, like I've said, I'm going to use a sample calculator react application. I'm going to show you the Docker file, the build Docker file. So it's a pretty straightforward Docker file. Uh, we are using here Node Alpine. So like I've said, if you're using another version of uh, like Ubuntu or something, then it might be even larger image. But this Node Alpine itself is a very small image. Still, I'm going to show you how we can optim optimize this uh, Docker image. This is what people do mostly. They get the image and then you have these basic steps of you know, working directory, which I'm not going to cover about how to create a Docker file. I'm assuming that you have your Docker installed and then you know the basics of a Docker file. If you do not know, it's very straightforward. You can find it you know, on, on the Docker documentation. Again, we're using a, a Node Alpine, Node 14 version of uh, Alpine. And then we are calling that as a builder. And I'm copying the package JSON of you know, the calculator application and then running npm install and copying all the necessary stuff into that directory from the local and then exposing 3000. And finally, we are running this npm build. So let's see what happens when I run this, you know, as a Docker build. All right, so I have the same files here with the, the calculator react application. And now I'm going to run Docker. All right, I'm going to call it as a calculator build. Uh, build is the tag here. So it's going to take a while. So I'm going to pause this video. All right, so the build is completed. So now let's look at the images. So what we have here is the calculator that we have just built and then the size is 393 MB. But I can still run this as a container. So if you're not aware of, you know, how to optimize your Docker container properly, and this is one of the most common thing that you will find in your company people do, which you can 
hopefully after watching this video you can help them out to optimize their images much better all right so now we have built the container and what we have here is a running container in the port on port 3000 i'm going to open this port 3000 in my chrome let me open the incognito and local host 3000 all right so there you go you have a, a calculator which is running inside my docker container okay now so that's a conventional way that's a normal way that people do now let's look at how we can optimize this docker image so for that i'm going to open the actual i'm going to open the multi-stage docker file now here you're going to see different stages so again we're using the same image here node 14 alpine and then copy the whole stuff is similar um, this is also similar here we're using yarn build because i ran uh, issues when i was doing npm build but that's not what we're going to discuss here so we're going to do a yarn build and then here if you see from nginx as production so you have two stages here primarily and uh, you have two stages here one is uh, we are using this stage as a builder and then this stage as production now when we are using this as an alias what we're doing is after the build is completed so i'm copying the executable into nginx html which is the final static content of react.js that got built in the previous stage and i'm copying that into html but that's pretty much it and then finally i'm running this uh, in the command as an nginx um, as a web server so when i build this file essentially what happens is that the stage one will start and then code will be built in the stage one and after the build is completed and the file is copied this will be deleted and you will not have that image and finally you will just have image of nginx which is what you should be ideally using because that has the you know runtime or that has the executable uh, that is what have to be deployed to a container platform all right so now let's run this and see the output of the optimized docker image I'm going to call this as a latest so that you will be knowing the difference between the one that we have built before and then the latest one all right so the docker build is completed and if we look at the docker images you will see the latest that i've built and the size is 21 mb so that's how you're going to optimize your image and now if i run this container if i run the docker and then create a container I'm going to create it in run it in 8080 port and show you by opening the application localhost and 8080 okay there you go so you we have the same application running inside a container but it is better optimized and then now you can use this container and deploy it into a cloud run or kubernetes which we which i can show it in my, one of my upcoming demo by pushing that into a into a repository i hope this video was helpful to you all if you like this video give it a like and then let me know in your comment section if you want me to cover more docker tutorials and as well as deploy this in the gke in my upcoming video or in a cloud run or any such any such tips that you would like to know but do consider subscribing to my channel thank you all for watching see you all in the next video